In this video, we're going to take a look at structural induction. If you have not watched video 5.3.1, please do so before you watch this video as we began an example in that video that we will continue in this video. Structural induction is just a fancy kind of mathematical induction. It has the same two steps. It has a basis step and an inductive step and it really ties nicely to the recursive definitions that we just reviewed in video 5.3.1. So again, if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch that. So the basis step basically asks us to show that our um, whatever it is that we're conjecturing is true for any values in the basis step of the recursive definition. The inductive step says make sure that whatever conjecture you have is true for all of the elements used to construct the new elements in the recursive definition. So again, it all ties back to whatever our basis step and recursive step were in the uh, recursive definition. Let's take a look now at our first example. And again, we're going to just pick up right where we left off for our recursive definition for the basis step of 0, 0 and the recursive step that tells us how to find new elements. What we want to do is we want to prove our conjecture and our conjecture is what we came up with in video 5.3.1 that the value of a in an ordered pair um, that is an element of s is going to be less than or equal to the value of 2 times b. So let's go ahead and get started on our proof. So we're going to say let p of n be that a is less than or equal to 2b for all a and b that belongs to s after n, because we're saying p of n, after n applications of the recursive definition. So that's where the n comes into play. We're saying however many applications, however many times we go through it. The basis step, again, is going to match with the basis step of our definition. The basis step of our definition only tells us that 0, 0 is an element of s. So all I have to do is show that 0, 0 satisfies this property. So a is 0 and b is 0 and 0 is less than or equal to 2 times 0, which is 0, and therefore the basis step is satisfied. So now let's look at the inductive step. So for the inductive step, we are going to look at whether adding 1 to b, adding 1 to a and 1 to b, and adding 2 to a and 1 to b is still going to satisfy the property. So let's look at each case. So if I start, and again, I'm assuming that this is going to be true. So I'm going to assume that a is in fact less than or equal to 2b. Uh, I'm assuming the relationship is true. And then I'm going to take a look at what happens when I apply the relationship. So by adding 1 to b, I'm actually adding 2. So I'm adding 0 to the left side, and I'm adding 2 to the right side. And obviously, 0 is less than or equal to 2. So that's going to keep the relationship. If I look at the second one, adding 1 to a and adding 1 to b. So we start with a is less than or equal to 2b. I add 1 to a and I add 1 to b, but again, by distributive property, I've actually added 1 to the left side and I've added 2 to the right side. And this is still going to be okay. And then for the last one, I'm adding 2 to a and 1 to b. So we start with the assumption that a started as a is less than or equal to 2b. Now I'm going to add 2 to a, and I'm going to add just 1 to b. But again, by the distributive property, I've added 2 to each side. And 2 is certainly less than or equal to 2. 
So again, I'm, I'm sort of out of room here, but this is all I have to do for structural induction is to say that obviously, based on the three cases, that's not going to interfere with the relationship that A is less than or equal to 2B. Here's a question for you to try. I have given you the conjecture already, but you would find it very quickly. If you find some of the first values found by a few applications of the recursive definition. So find some of those initial values and then go ahead and try your hand at the proof by structural induction. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, good idea to start by looking at the basis step that tells me that three is in S. And then the first application of the recursive step says if A is an S and B is an S, then A plus B is an S. So essentially it's saying take any elements that you have and you can add them together and that's also going to be in your set. So the only element I have is three. So all I can do is take three plus three, which gives me six. For my second application, I can add three plus three. I can add three plus six, which is nine. And I can add six plus six, which is 12. For my third application, I can take 3 plus 3, 3 plus 6, 3 plus 9, uh, 3 plus 12. So 3 plus 12 is 15. I can take 6 plus 9, which is 15, or 6 plus 12, which is 18. I can take 9 plus 9, which is 18, or 9 plus 12, which is 21. And I can take 12 plus 12, which is 24. So what I'm seeing is that all of my values are multiples of three, and I feel pretty confident that that would continue. And again, that's what we're looking at here. This says three divides X. So just a little reminder from your days in discrete math, when we say that three divides X, that means that we can say X is equal to three times some number. That's what it means to say that three divides X is that three is going to be multiplied by some number to give you the value of X. So knowing that we're now going to begin our proof. We're going to say, let P of N be that three divides X for all X in S after n applications of the recursive definition. So our basis step just has to show that any values given to us in our basis step of our recursive definition do in fact work. So three divides three since three is equal to three times one. So again, I'm just using that definition of what happens when three divides X. For my recursive step, oops, I'm just change colors there. So for, I'm sorry, my inductive step, I'm going to assume, again, my inductive hypothesis is that a is an S and B is an S. So if my inductive hypothesis is that both of those values are an S, um, then we can say that A is an S. So A is three times some number and B is an S. So B is equal to three times some other number. Again, based on my definition of what it means to be divisible by a value. So a plus b is equal to 3m plus 3n, which is equal to 3 times m plus n, which means that 3 divides a plus b, again, because I can write it in that same format. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at some applications of recurrence relations.